Keegan the vlog here. Welcome back to Rad Savers. And today, well, we're looking at Rad Radwood computers, not Radwood cars. These are some of the electronic devices that I grew up with. Uh, several generations of computer here on the shelf um, from the 8-bit and 16-bit era. Uh, mostly Motorola 6502s and one 68,000. Uh, based processor computers here on the shelf. We have an Atari 800, we have a Commodore VIC-20, we have an Atari 800 XL, and we have an Atari 1040 ST. Really interested to see what works and what doesn't. Suspect the hardware works. Not too sure about uh, loading the software from these discs. We have an array of media. We have cartridges, which I think will be fine. Um, we have five and a quarter inch floppy disks. Some of them may be fine. Uh, and we have uh, three and a half inch floppy disks. Um, the, the more sturdier floppy disks. Again, maybe fine. We'll find out. We also have tapes. I don't think I can locate the tape drive, however. Uh, back in the day, you used to be able to uh, save and retrieve computer programs onto cassette tapes, magnetic tapes, very similar to a spinning floppy disk, uh, but of course linear and much, much slower uh, because uh, you, have to, you have to go to a specific spot on the tape in order for that spot to be read. So um, much more basic technology. <laughs> modems, probably not going to try modems, don't have anybody to call. Uh, not, there are no bulletin boards anymore. Actually, I'm going to look into that. I'll bet there are. I'll bet somebody's running a bulletin board, and hopefully it's for good and not for evil. Um, anyway, let's get into it. This might be the raddest of all computers here, the Atari 800. Look at this beauty. Software on cartridges, operating system on ROM, and 48K of RAM. Look at that. This has been in a damp basement for the better part of several decades. Um, let's see how, see how it held up. See on the side of this thing, you have your basic power input, peripheral input. Uh, they, there was a monitor for this, this style computer. We don't have it. Um, and then a power switch. I actually found the power supply that is labeled for use with Atari 400, 800 personal computers. So we plug this in here. This is specifically for the left cartridge. So the idea here is if we turn this on, we should get a basic language prompt. It does not seem to be doing anything. Well, considering these are all the same output, the 9-volt power output, let's try another power supply and see if it works. Okay, we're not getting any, uh, any love from either one of those power supplies, so perhaps, perhaps, this computer is a no longer functioning unit. Okay, the Atari 800 failed to power up. Uh, with multiple power supplies. So we're going to move on to the Atari 800 XL. And with the 800 XL, you move it up to 64K of RAM built in. Also, you only have one cartridge slot because basic is built in as well. So uh, you, know, you don't need the extra slot for the basic language. Uh, there's one slot on this one, a little sleeker design, a little smaller form factor. Uh, but still, with the RF output for the video, and you have the channel 2 and 3 there for, uh, for over-the-air uh, modulation, so you can run this on channel 2 or channel 3 um, on the television RF spectrum. So what I actually need to make this work is to be able to go out of the computer RCA, go into to the TV, the uh, standard coaxial 
I don't remember what this end is called. Anyway, I'm going to, I found this cable here that's already half cut up, so I am going to see if I can uh, make that cable, see if this works. Holy crap, it works. There it is. There it is. There it is. Yep. Now there were multiple ways to load software into the RAM of these these old computers. The most resilient method were cartridges. Uh, so this is just this is a I think of this as like a USB drive today. Uh, this is just a hardware memory, and you put it in there and. Garbage Scout Captain Class 2. Ouch. This, this is a little different. This is a five and a half inch floppy disk drive for the software that was on diskette. This is going to be a little less likely to work, but let's give it a shot. Okay, here's something really cool. Disk operating system, DOS. That's what that actually means. Um, we have disk operating system two for the Atari 400 800. I'm gonna try to boot it on the 800 XL and see what happens. Don't ask me how I remember that. There it is. Okay, I found my two favorite games uh, from, from the Atari 800 years, uh, Choplifter and Fort Apocalypse. Both of them happen to be helicopter games, go figure. Um, let's see if Choplifter works. We requires 48K, please remove cartridges. Okay. That's funny. This computer has 64K. So this software requires not at least 48K, but exactly 48K. Weird. I wonder if that was holding the option down. Hang on, let me try that. I think that was it. That was to make the computer, to make the software think that it was an Atari 800, not an 800 XL. Don't ask me how I remember that. I think this might, might be a, a bad disc. This is that bad disc. It's not getting past the spot, it's retrying. Okay, chop lifter did not seem to work. I'm going to attempt Fort Apocalypse. Okay, I'm terrible at this game. I'm terrible at all these games, but that's the fun of it, right? All right, what else do we have? That's funny. That's not right. <laughs>
This is harder than the real thing, just saying. Okay, so this is the Atari 1040 ST. This happens to be an F model. Uh, one of the interesting things about these computers, you saw on the Atari 800, the operating system is a ROM. They continued that into this, the next generation. This is a 68,000 Motorola processor, and this has a graphical user interface. The operating system is on ROM, so when you flip the power switch on, the desktop pops up pretty quick. So you turn the computer on, And you have a desktop. I mean, that's really impressive for 1985. Uh, and it works just like an old Apple. Object mover. I don't remember what object mover does. is MIDI software for moving programs on and off of the old Kurzweil, the K1000. Oh, something very interesting about this computer, it is the only production computer to ever have incorporated MIDI ports on the main board natively. This computer was a favorite of of musicians, specifically keyboard players of the 80s, because of that feature. This would connect to a MIDI instrument, mostly keyboards at the time, and this software was for communicating with those MIDI devices and essentially storing programs on disk to free up memory on your, your keyboard because you had limited memory. Wow. So I don't intend this to be a playthrough video. Just uh, just wanted to show you some some Radwood computer games from the late 1980s. Um, I'll put a link in the description to somebody who's actually done a playthrough on this. Maybe if I can find one actually on an Atari ST. Uh, if you want to see how this game plays through, this is what <laughs> passed for 
quality computer games in 1989 on uh, personal computers. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the Radwood Atari ST computer game experience. Uh, probably enough of these videos for now. We'll get back to cars. <laughs> it's fun. All right, see you next time. Aww.